Morning. Morning. Good morning. Welcome to Church of Meet here at Malden. And to our visitors, we want you to know you're our honored guest. We're glad you're here with us. We hope you stick around after our eight morning services so we can talk with you and get to know you. I hope each one of you picked up a bulletin. I'm not going to go over all the things in the bulletin. I will add a few things. Let's remember all the shut ins that's in our bulletin are sick. That's in the bulletin. Oh. Also, uh, to all our veterans, I know Veteran Days was Friday. I hope each one of you had a great day. We want to thank you for your service to our country. And uh, I got uh, in our bulletin, if you uh, look in there, the uh, it's the brunch and order and exchange. It says, see Katie, it's supposed to be December the 10th, not the 2nd. So uh, I guess uh, keep put that down. And also, let's remember December the 3rd at 10.30, we're going to go, the children will go gift shopping. And you can see Susanna for that. And also, December, Sunday, December the 11th, after evening worship, we're going to fill our fruit baskets. And you can see Vicki for that one. Uh, also, uh, the... Uh, Evening of prayer will be tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, so I hope each one of you can attend that. And also, ladies' Bible class will be this coming Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning. So ladies, uh, put that down. I got a few cards. I got one up. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's remember the family. It's uh, uh, Joe's brother, Doug Mormon. <coughs> Kathy, I announced, I think it was last uh, Sunday night, but Kathy Mormon, she actually passed away this uh, past Friday. So let's remember that family in our prayers also. Uh, and Kathy Dust gave me this and asked, said we need, she wanted a prayer request. It's the Price family, it's na her neighbors. Janice and Cliff Price was in an accident, a car accident yesterday, and Janice was killed. So let's remember that family. Also, uh, Joyce Kramer, it was her friend from Illinois, and she's uh, been diagnosed with cancer, so she also wants us to pray for her. I've got a card here, and I'll read it to you. It says, we have been so blessed by knowing the people at Milden. Thank you so much for your prayers, cards, and letter. I enjoyed the sunshine basket from the ladies. Thank you. Also, thank you, Dennis, for bringing it to our house. All of you have been so kind. 
Christian Love, Gene Chapman. We're glad to see you back with us. We're glad you're back with us. And also, uh, I got another card. It actually was supposed to have uh, done it last week, and I didn't do it. So it says, uh, this is from Becky Pepper. It says, we're doing fine. And this was from the hurricane, the first hurricane that comes through Florida. It says, got settled back down from the hurricane. And said, hope everyone is better from all the sickness. Love you and miss you all. In Christian love, Becky Pepper. Mm -hmm. Into, oh, after our uh, closing prayer, if you will, if you'll be seated. We got just a thing that uh, John's going to come up and going to have a thing just for our veterans. If you don't mind, be seated after closing prayer. It won't take just a few minutes. And also, we're going to be having a luncheon after our morning worship. So I hope each one of you stay with, it, with us there. Into our service today, our song leader is Joel Foster. Our scripture read by Ray Moore. Our lesson by Dennis Strine. And our closing prayer by Mike Fairclough. So, if you will, we're going to begin our worship with an open prayer. We bow in between. Our kind, lovely Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come out and say a portion of our word. Thank you for your son Jesus as he comes to this earth, lived and died as a man, and hung up on that cross for each and every one of us. We pray at this time <clears throat> for all the ones that have been mentioned sick here this morning, especially the ones that have cancers, be having surgeries, especially be with the ones that have come back from surgeries and been able to be back with us. Pray that you'll be with the doctors and nurses and the families that take care of them. Also pray that you'll be with the ones that have lost loved ones. Be with the Doug Mormon family. Also be with the Price family. Pray that they'll look unto you for guidance at this time. I also want to thank you for all of our veterans. Pray for the sacrifice that they've given unto this country. I just want to thank them at this time. I also want to thank you for our visitors that are here with us this morning. They're from our neighborhood. They'll be back each and every opportunity they have. If they're traveling, pray that you'll keep them safe and return them back to their homes. Pray at this time that you'll be with our brother Joel as he leads our singing today. We'll all lift up our voices of praise unto you. Be with Brother Dennis if you have rec recollection of things he studied. Pray each one of us will take these things that he teaches unto us. We'll study them ourselves, apply them in our lives, and be a shining example to our community and teach others our word. Thank you for Dennis and Nick as they work here with us at this congregation. Pray that you'll give them many years of service unto you. Also pray that each and everything we say and do here will always be according to our will. Pray that you'll be with the church here, the church of the world over. Also pray that you'll be with our number that are out sick. They may return back to their health and be back with us. We thank you for all the prayers that you've answered that we've asked for. No, if what for you, we would not have nothing here. We wouldn't have only to do everything to us. Pray that you'll always be with us, that you'll always guard, guide, direct, and secure us all many sins. Christ, let us pray. Amen. Morning. Morning. Good to see so many people back that have been out. We almost had more people out than we had here for the last three weeks. So it's good today to see so many because I can't hear you. I've got an ear infection and I can barely hear. So hopefully that will make, make, uh, make it where I can hear you a little bit better. 
One, two, eight. One, two, eight. That was internal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath found the restless way, who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. Oh, here, trust when we cry to Thee for those in peril on the sea. O oh, Christ, whose voice the waters heard, and hushed their raging at Thy word, who walkest on the Supper. <coughs> Seven, six, nine. Seven, six, nine. <coughs> Love said, My Savior, to die in my stead. Why should he? Savior, in order to obey the law of Moses, had gathered together on this fateful night to observe the Passover feast with his disciples. A love story that was tragic and joyful all in one. He brought this together with his disciples to share the bread and the cup with them, to give those two emblems meaning. The apostles later on would continue that 
we find the examples that are set. Acts 20, verse 7. And also Paul in 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Of this Lord's Supper that was continued to be continued as a memorial feast. After they had entered the city, after Jesus had given the disciples their instructions on preparing for this feast. In Luke chapter 22. So when the hour came, verse 14, that Jesus reclined at the table and his apostles with him. And he said, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he broke bread, took bread, given thanks, broke it, gave it to them, said, This is my body, which is given to you in remembrance of me. And likewise with the cup after they eat, and said, This is the cup that is poured out for you, and it is a new covenant in my blood. We observe this each Lord's Day as a reminder for us not only to start off our new week with this memorial feast and the importance of it, but also to give true meaning to why we are here this day. For without the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, this would be the first day of the week and a work week and a week where we were torn. But Jesus gave us this day because of his death and resurrection, a day that we can take to honor him, to honor God our Father, and to remember just what it took to save the world. Let us have a prayer for the bread, please. Let us pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we come into thee, thanking thee for this opportunity that we get to assemble around thy table to remember thy son Jesus who went to the cross to demonstrate the greatest love ever. We ask, Father, that each and every one that takes of this will do so in a way and manner that will be well-pleasing unto thee, Father. Forgive us of our sins and thy coming in your name. Amen. Amen. This time let us have a prayer for the cup, please. Our kind of Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity <clears throat> that we have to take of this, the fruit of the vine, which represents the shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we as Christians partake of this in a manner pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name. Thank you. 
that concludes our servants of the Lord's Supper, we are also commanded by Paul, the apostle, just as he had commanded the churches of Galatia, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 16, verses 1 and 2, to lay by in store. There's also, we note that in the letter to the Philippians, how the Philippians gave in order to ease Paul's burdens while he was in prison. Much of what the churches of Asia contributed for was to uh, help those brothers and sisters in Christ in Jerusalem uh, through the ordeal, the famine, the persecution that they were facing. We lay by in store this day to be able to continue the work here in our congregation, to be able to maintain the facilities that we have here, but more importantly, to make sure that the gospel is spread throughout the world, through our missions in India, our missions in Brazil, to the churches that we support. So we pray that you will look into your heart, <coughs> be able to give what you have purposed in that heart. But not only just to give, but to enjoy doing it. Because God wants to choose for you. So I have a good prayer for, uh, prayer for the offering, please. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we come in prayer this morning apart from thy table. To give thanks, Father, for the wonderful many blessings of life that you bestow upon us. Father, we're thankful for our health and our homes and our families and our jobs. May be prepared to give back just a portion of the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We just pray, Father, that we would give so with an open and cheerful heart. And we just pray, Father, that all that is given will be used to uplift your kingdom here on earth. This prayer we ask this morning is in the strong and loving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Three, six, two. Three, six, two. <clears throat> joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun.
read from Nehemiah chapter 8, verses 9 and 10. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. And he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink the sweet, sweet wine, and send portions to every, anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy in our, to our Lord, and do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Many of us are living the good life. I'm not talking about worldly possessions, the things that we have that we want. I'm talking about a great family, a great job, great relationships with our friends and our neighbors. But if we do have all these things, how oh, Many of us oftentimes feel angry, gloomy, insecure, guilt ridden, and easily upset over minor everyday problems. Truth be told, we probably all experience these feelings one time or another. Oftentimes feels as if we're living on a treadmill. Our lives are slipping by and we're not really enjoying it. Our habits have settled into routines. It seems as if our days are long and our years are short. Maybe our lives just not what we wanted it to be. More than likely, we're not really experiencing any unhappiness, but genuine joy seems to be hiding from us. In John 10 and verse 10, Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. But do we feel it? Do we feel as if we have that abundant life? One of the problems that we have with this verse is that we feel that we should have everything that we want so that we can be happy. But Jesus is not talking about our physical. He was talking about life abundantly spiritually. This morning, our lesson will be based on two scriptures. The first scripture is 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. Here, Peter gives us character traits that bring about a good life, things that we are to add to our faith, things such as virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection with love. And he goes on a little bit further on in a few verses that by adding these traits we will make our election sure that we will have that right relationship with God, that we will be fruitful and effective in God's kingdom. And the second verse set of verses scripture comes from Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 the fruit of the spirit that Paul writes love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control but of all these attributes this morning we're going to focus on one joy Biblical joy is the gladness of heart. It comes from intimately knowing God, living in Christ, having the right relationship with each other, being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Friends, we were created for relationships. From the very beginning, God wanted us to have a relationship with him. He wanted us to have a relationship with one another. And our biblical joy comes when these relationships are correct. If you look in Luke chapter 2 and verse 10, we have here the angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds in the field. He was going to announce the birth of Christ. And he said these words, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Not just a few people. Not just the Jews, but for all people. In Psalm 16 and verses 8 through 11, David says, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. My whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. For you will not abandon me to the grave. You will not let your Holy One see corruption. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there shall fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. There is a difference between happiness and joy. I've said it many times before. Happiness is based on situations and circumstances that are around us. Happiness is what is happening to us and with us and around us, while joy is a heart condition. What would make you happy this morning? New car? A home? Dream vacation? A very short sermon? I can tell you in all four, it's not going to happen. Especially the last one. Happiness is our situation and circumstances being what we want them to be. If there is any country on the face of this earth where people should be happy, it's here in the United States. But we're not. Depression affects. 25-30% of the citizens of this country. 40 million, almost 18% have some kind of anxiety disorder. Those numbers are going up. Those numbers don't even include all of our children that in the past couple of years have been affected tragically by this COVID. But the good news is is that the joy of the Lord, the joy of a good life, isn't the same as the happiness that eludes us. And we can see the difference in the way the words are used in the Bible. It took me a little bit of a time this week when I, I got in because I typically use the American Standard. I've got an American Standard Concordance, a straw. And I looked up happiness, and it appears 19 times in the Bible. But I looked up joy and rejoice, and they're found 329 times in the Bible. While happiness may be a distant cousin to joy, it is not the same thing. Tim Hansel, he was an author, and he says that joy is a posture, a position. It's about where we stand with God and others. And he further said that joy is not a feeling, it's a choice. It's not based on circumstances, but on attitude. While it is free, it's not cheap. It is the byproduct of a correct relationship with God and our fellow man. If you want to look at a great example of joy, we have to look no further than Acts chapter 16, verses 22 through 25. 
We have the account of, of Paul and Silas. They were preaching in Philippi. People didn't like it, so they dragged them before the magistrates, and the magistrates ordered them stripped and beaten. And then they were cast into prison. And it wasn't just in a jail cell. It was the darkest, deepest part of that jail. And there they were sat down. Their feet were manacled. I can probably say with all certainty that Paul and Silas were not happy. But we see something of joy. Where it says around midnight, they were praying and singing. See, there's a difference between that happiness and joy. None of us would be happy sitting in prison. But joy is something that cannot be taken away from us. Only we can let it go. You see, the letter that Paul wrote to the Philippians, he wrote when he was in prison. And that letter is a letter of joy. Because the letter to the Philippians is about relationships with God and man. Our joy comes when we have that right relationship with God. When we are right with God, He rejoices. And it is only through that relationship that we have joy in all of its fullness. In Psalms chapter 5 and verse 11, David writes, Let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing for joy. Let those who love your name rejoice in you. In Psalm 105, in verse 3, let your hearts, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. And then in Isaiah 61 and verse 10, Isaiah writes, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. Another author by the name of Bruce Larson, he wrote, joy is the surest sign of God's presence in one's life. The bottom line for us is simply that grimness is not a Christian virtue. If God is the center of our life, then joy is inevitable. If there is no joy in us, then we have missed the heart of the good news. 68 years ago, C.S. Lewis described joy that makes a lot of sense even today. He said a car is made to run on petrol. And it would not properly run on anything else. God designed the human machine to run on himself. He is the fuel our spirits were designed to burn. The food our spirits were designed to feed on. Paul affirms these words in Acts 17, verse 28. And he said to the man in Athens, in him we live and move and have our being. Joy comes from being a people that God wants us to be. It is the result of our obedience, knowing that we are right with God, that we were forgiven, that we are pure and holy, and that we're heaven bound. Joy is knowing that God is in control of our lives, that he is working out everything for our benefit. David, in Psalm 35, verse 9, he said, My soul shall be joyful in the Lord, it shall rejoice in his salvation. <laughs> Have you ever considered that Christian joy is letting Christ live out his life through us. So that who and what he is, we become.
this is the reason that we must continually remind ourselves that we are to conform to his image, that we are to develop his heart, his attitude, his disposition, his behavior. Keeping our eyes focused on Christ, living like Jesus would live and doing what Jesus would do. It is that kind of life that produces a joy that cannot be extinguished. Paul in Colossians 1 and verse 11, he says, We are strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for endurance and patience with joy. In John chapter 15, after Jesus' thoughts on the vine and the branches, in verse 11, he concludes his thoughts with, These things I have spoken to you, that you, that my joy may be in you that your joy may be full. <laughs> Friends, our joy is determined by whether or not Jesus is at home in our lives. Joy also comes when we submit to the Holy Spirit. God's word is the purveyor of joy. The Holy Spirit lives in us as children of God. And if we're not experiencing joy, then it is quite possible that we're not allowing the Spirit to control our lives. Or we're not walking in step with the Spirit. For you see, the Spirit wants to lead us into truth. The Spirit wants to remind us of Jesus' teachings the Spirit wants to convict us of sin's guilt, to convince us of righteousness and judgment. The Spirit wants to be our guide. Biblical joy and the Holy Spirit go together. Paul in Romans 14 and verse 17, he said, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating or drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then in 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 6, Paul said, And you become imitators of us and of the Lord. For you receive the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. What kind of relationship do we have with one another? I'm not talking about our immediate families because we know those relationships uh, while they can be tenuous at times, are always low in there. But what about one another? Where is our relationship there? You see, our joy will become ours when our relationship with others are right. When we have that heart for others, when we have that heart for the lost, when that heart that we have, that joy that we have living in us will allow us to mention Christ to them, to speak to them about Christ. You know, there's no greater joy than knowing that we are heaven bound and that we are going to be taking someone else with us. Not just the one we're sitting next to in the pews or the, the, the one that we, we go home with. Strangers out on the street. We also are to have that heart for the saved so that we can enjoy genuine Christian fellowship. That fellowship is our hearing and heeding the one another passages in the New Testament, of which there are over a hundred times one another is mentioned. Friends, we're family. We're family. Deep-seated joy is not based on what we possess, but on relationships. We can't buy it. We can't sell it. It is ours for the taking. But it requires a lot of that. <coughs>
the joy of the Lord is our strength. And it can be ours. We don't have to be happy all the time. But we can be joyful all the time. If there is anyone here this morning who desires to be that become that child of God, we want to give you that opportunity. The joy is there. It's God is willingly and graciously offering it to everyone. For God wants everyone to come to repentance and to be saved. God does not want anyone to be lost. If your desire is to obey the gospel this morning, to repent, to confess him before men, to be baptized in New Testament baptism, to have your sins washed away, to give you a new life, we want to give you that opportunity. Maybe you are a child of God. Maybe the life you have been living is not quite the way and you're still searching for happiness that is eluding you that you don't have the joy that you thought you should have. A relationship and getting it right with God can mend a lot of us. Heal a lot of wounds. Have a new start. For God's children are continually washed in the blood of the Lamb. We can be repentant of those things and have our sins taken away. If there's any desire this morning, won't you come? Together we stand and we sing. <laughs> to be like Jesus. meal. Now, all are welcome. And uh, we're doing this to honor our veterans. Um, there's a picture in our um, on the counter in there of the veterans that we had once upon a time. And there were many of them. Uh, now there's just a few. And we take that time to honor their sacrifice and their service to our nation. But always remember this. While we honor our veterans, Every single one of us is in the Lord's army. We are all veterans, all of us. And most important, the veterans of Christ are the ones that get not medals on the chest, but a crown of life. This time we'll be dismissed in prayer, and then I believe John, you have uh, someone else. Okay, so let us be dismissed in prayer, please. Oh, Lord God, blessed be thy name above all men. You are our God. You are our creator. You made everything, everything that we know. We're so very thankful for this time we've been able to gather together to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your presence on this day, for being here among us. We're so thankful for each person that's here, thankful for your loving kindness, Thank you for being our God. We're thankful for your son who so willingly came to this earth. 
who lived among us, who walked among us, who showed us how to treat one another and care for one another. And when the time was right, he willingly laid his life down on that cross so that we could be cleansed and set free from the sin that we brought into our lives. On this day, we're thankful for those that have served, thankful for what they were willing to sacrifice. We're thankful for those that are serving now and ask that, ask that you keep them from harm and conflict. We ask that you be with each one of us as we leave this place. Help us strive to walk with you, to walk with your son and your spirit, and to always live a life that brings honor and glory to you. We're thankful for all you do for us. We're so thankful for your son and his love. And it's in his most holy and precious name that we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.